up? It's Lionheart Anti Crash War, aka DG Keanu, just showing you a quick guide on how to do mature grot worms. Matures are level 167, and they can be found at the bottom level of the grot worm lair, which is also where you find the Queen Black Dragon. Uh, yes, they can be assigned as a slayer test from Curadel. Uh, why would you do matures? Well, mostly for the profits. If you look at the screenshot I'm showing you now, that is what I got in roughly about an hour's time or one trip to the Grotworms without using a familiar such as a Pakiak or Banking. Now, if you include the Sarbrews and Super Restores that I used up, you make about 500k an hour and you probably will make more if you go use a Pakiak or you bank or you use a better setup than the one I have. In terms of XP, I did use the whip on accurate style. Yes, accurate style. So I only got about 50 to 60k XP an hour. Now, if you used it on something like controlled or you brought range or a weapon such as a chaotic longsword or chaotic rapier, you're looking at about 70 to 90k XP an hour. It is not the best training XP in the game, but you will get a decent chunk out of it. The first thing you want to do is decide on your gear setups. Now, Grotworms are fairly weak to range, so if you want to bring range, then by all means, please do. Um, but I'm just going to go through the melee setups. Now, I am max melee, which means I have 99 attack, defense, strength, and constitution. And I've also got the higher end gear, Bando's Chestplate, Tacit's DFS, Fury, Berserker Ring, and stuff like that. Now, if you are like me, you've got the levels and you've got the gear, then you don't actually need food or prayer potions or anything like that. You can just bring a bunny at pouch or maybe two or three, depending on how long you want to stay there without banking. And you don't even need to waste money on a unicorn pouch because the bunny ups will easily replenish what little damage is dealt to you over time. In terms of your weapon, you have a few choices. Now, they are really weak to stab and slash attacks. So if you've got a chaotic longsword, a chaotic rapier, you might want to bring one of those. If not, you can use the abyssal whip because that has nice slash bonuses or maybe even a dragon scimitar. And of course, you can bring a spec weapon as well. The preference is the dragon claws. Apart from the Bandos, DFS, and Fury that I've got on, the other gear is the Berserker Ring, Dragon Boots, Barrow's Gloves, Helm of Nisanaut for the Strength Bonus, Fire Cape, you can swap that for a Rhino Cape from the Tazar Kiln if you want. I'm using the Knockout Aura because I don't bring Prayer Potions. If you are going to be using Prayer, you might want to consider Reverence instead, but of course the Aura is optional. Now, if you cannot afford the higher-end gear like Bandos, then you might want to go with Barrow stuff. I would recommend Torags. Or, if you are a lower defense level and you expect to be taking a lot of damage, go with a set of full Guthans and the Guthans Spear, so you can do a bit of healing there. If you can't afford Barrows, go with a combination of Rune and maybe some Dragon, a Fighter Torso. Essentially, bring the best melee defense bonus that you can. Now, if you're under 99 defense and you expect to be taking a little bit of damage, there are two options you have. The first one would be to use prayer, and I would recommend between 4 and 8 prayer potions, depending on your prayer and combat level. Now, the alternative to prayer is replacing 4 to 6 of these prayer potions with prayer renewals, which is going to cost a little bit more, but it is actually going to be a little bit more effective. Now, if you don't want to go with prayer, you can use sharks as food. I would recommend between 8 to 12 sharks. And if you don't want to use sharks, you can always go with the Sar Bruise and Super Resort, which, once again, is going to cost a little bit more, but it's more effective. I would say between 1 to 2 rows of Sar Bruise and Resort, which is 3 brews and 1 Restore per row. And, of course, you drink these by going 3 brews and 1 Restore dose at a time. Now, if you are using the prayer method, you will need level 43 prayer for protect from melee, or you can use deflect melee if you're on curses. And if you are using prayer, you might want to swap the DFS over for Dragon Defender, as you're not going to actually be hit with melee at all, so you want to up your melee offense bonuses there. There are a few different ways to get to the Groutworm Lair. I would say the most convenient is to home teleport to the Port Sarum Lodestone, and from there, run directly northwest. Now, you could use the teleport on Remora's Necklace, which will bring you right about here. However, you can only use that once per day, and it is a waste of an inventory space, so I would say the home teleport is much more convenient. Once you're outside the cave entrance, you've got a nice summoning obelisk there if you need to renew your points, and then head straight inside and go directly west. 
When you come to this huge open area, if you go a little bit south, you'll see the agility shortcut icon on your minimap, and you're going to need level 50 agility to go through this. If you don't have 50 agility, then you have to walk through the whole cave, but if you do, just right click and click slide down, and you will come to the area with the mature growl twins. Now, Grout Worms, they have both a melee and magic attack. If I step a few squares away, they will attack with this magic attack, and that can hit up to 200 or so on you. So when you're running in to attack one, the best thing to do would be to put up Protect from Magic or Deflect Magic. And once you get into melee range like this, you can switch over to Protect from Melee, Deflect Melee, or just turn your prayer off in general. In terms of what to pick up for drops, it's really about using your initiative and deciding what's the best way to use your inventory space depending on your wealth. Now, I did not mention this before, but if you are not using a familiar like a bunny, then if you've got 96 plus summoning, you can bring a pack yak and some winter storage scrolls. That means if you find an item that you want to keep, you can just yak it back to your bank and it will save you a lot of time because you won't have to bank as much, so pack yaks are definitely worth it. Uh, what to pick up? They drop a lot of rune stuff. Rune helms, shields, chains, swords, maces. Uh, a lot of rune stuff worth between 10k and 30k each. So that's definitely worth keeping. And you should also pick up the coins as well because you get between 2k and 7k per cash pile that they drop. So that will add up nicely to about 100k per inventory you get. Um... If you are running low on food, like I am slightly there, they do occasionally drop stuff like one or two sharks at a time, a two-dose sarbrew, and sometimes a two-dose super restore, so you will have a little bit of food as well. And that pretty much concludes this guide. So that is Mature Grout Worms. They are a decent amount of XP, they give some good profit, and they are surprisingly easy despite their high combat level. So if you've got any questions, comments, or problems, I am no PVM expert, but leave a comment below and I will try my best to help out. Apart from that, all the best, and cheerio! There are a few ways to get to the Groutworm Lair. Now the easiest way I would say- ooh look a penguin! I would say the most convenient is to home teleport to the Port Sarum Lodestone, and from there just run directly northwest. Um, what? What? Okay, that's, um, yeah. Okay, that's, that's interesting.